Hello and welcome to this tech tip from Will. In this video, I will look at Generation 1 and Generation 2 virtual machines in Hyper-V for Windows Server 2012 R2. Understanding the difference between the two generations of virtual machine will help you make the right choice when virtualizing your workloads. So, let's get started. Before I look at the difference between Generation 1 and Generation 2 virtual machines in Hyper-V, let's first take a look at how the two virtual machine types came about. The Hyper-V role, which allows you to create and manage virtual machines in Windows, was first introduced in Windows Server 2008. Back in those days, when you installed the Hyper-V role and created a virtual machine, you were not given a choice of generation for your virtual machines. In other words, there was just one type of virtual machine to choose from. A virtual machine was a virtual machine. Although Microsoft made some improvements to the Hyper-V role in Windows Server 2008 R2 and Windows Server 2012, this still remained the case. Just one type of virtual machine and no choice of generation. With the release of Windows Server 2012 R2, however, this all changed. With Windows Server 2012 R2, one of the big improvements made to Hyper-V was to allow the administrator to choose a generation of virtual machine. That is, when you install the Hyper-V role and create a virtual machine in Windows Server 2012 R2, you're now asked to choose which generation of virtual machine you want – Generation 1 or Generation 2. In short, Generation 1 virtual machines are exactly the same as the virtual machines found in Windows Server 2008, Windows Server 2008 R2 and Windows Server 2012. If you have any experience with Hyper-V in earlier versions of Windows, Generation 1 virtual machines should be familiar to you. Since Generation 1 virtual machines have been around for a while, they offer far greater compatibility with earlier versions of Hyper-V and Windows. Generation 2 virtual machines, on the other hand, are a new type of virtual machine that can only be created and used on Windows Server 2012 R2 Hyper-V servers. Because Generation 2 virtual machines are brand new to Windows Server 2012 R2, they offer no backward compatibility with earlier releases of Hyper-V. Microsoft has done this on purpose to ensure that Generation 2 virtual machines are essentially future-proofed. On the flip side, however, Generation 2 virtual machines offer features that are not found in Generation 1 virtual machines. To sum up, when you create a virtual machine on a Windows Server 2012 R2 Hyper-V server, you have to make a decision. Which is more important to you? Backward compatibility or newer features? I'll now take a closer look at the two generations of virtual machine and we'll look at what has changed with the newer Generation 2 virtual machines. The majority of changes between Generation 1 and Generation 2 virtual machines are related to hardware emulation. Because virtual machines are computers that run entirely in software, virtual machines are required to emulate their hardware. In other words, virtual machines are required to simulate all of the hardware found in regular computers, such as disk controllers, optical drives and network cards. This is called hardware emulation. The first major difference between the two generations of virtual machine is the amount of hardware being emulated. Seen here are the settings for a Generation 1 and Generation 2 virtual machine, Generation 1 being on the left and Generation 2 on the right. In the left-hand pane of each screenshot, you can see the hardware that is being emulated for the virtual machines. As you can see, the Generation 1 virtual machine on the left has rather a lot of emulated hardware, whereas the Generation 2 virtual machine on the right has far less emulated hardware. By reducing the amount of emulated hardware in Generation 2 virtual machines, Microsoft claims that this allows for faster install times and quicker boot times. The next difference to discuss is the firmware used to boot the virtual machines. Generation 1 virtual machines use the traditional BIOS firmware. BIOS has been the de facto standard for booting computers for many years. However, with Generation 2 virtual machines, BIOS has been replaced in favour of the new UEFI firmware. The original pilot for UEFI was developed back in the late 1990s. 
Since then, more than 140 technology companies, including Microsoft, have worked together to develop UEFI as a replacement for BIOS. With BIOS slowly being phased out, it makes sense that virtual machines will eventually adopt the newer UEFI standard. Generation 2 virtual machines are fully UEFI compatible. The main advantage to using UEFI over BIOS is that UEFI offers a new feature called Secure Boot. Secure Boot ensures that no malicious code or unauthorized software is running whilst the operating system boots up. The next change I will look at concerns disk controllers. In a regular computer, disk controllers are used to connect drives, such as hard drives and optical drives, to the computer. Both Generation 1 and Generation 2 virtual machines in Hyper-V use emulated disk controllers. Generation 1 virtual machines provide two IDE controllers, named IDE Controller 0 and IDE Controller 1. Just like with a physical IDE controller, you can attach up to two devices to each IDE controller. These devices include virtual hard disks, virtual DVD drives and even physical hard disks, also known as pass-through disks. IDE controllers can also be used to boot the virtual machine's operating system. That is why, with Generation 1 virtual machines, you should always connect your operating system drive to an IDE controller. In addition, Generation 1 virtual machines allow you to connect up to four SCSI controllers. Each SCSI controller can have up to 64 drives connected. However, these devices are limited to just virtual hard disks and physical hard disks. You can't attach virtual DVD drives, nor can you boot an operating system from a SCSI controller. SCSI controllers simply allow the administrator to attach additional data drives to the virtual machine. With Generation 2 virtual machines, Microsoft has simplified the available disk controllers. First of all, there are no IDE controllers whatsoever. Recognising that IDE controllers are now legacy, Microsoft decided to discontinue them for Generation 2 virtual machines. In fact, the only disk controllers available in Generation 2 virtual machines are the newer SCSI controllers. As with Generation 1 virtual machines, you can connect up to four SCSI controllers to each virtual machine, and each SCSI controller can have up to 64 drives attached. Since SCSI controllers are the only controllers available for Generation 2 virtual machines, you can now attach virtual hard disks, physical hard disks, and even virtual DVD drives to them. Furthermore, Generation 2 virtual machines are now capable of booting an operating system from a SCSI controller. I'm sure you'll agree that, if nothing else, controllers in Generation 2 virtual machines are much simpler and reduce the confusion between emulated IDE and SCSI controllers. This brings us to the next change, and that is virtual hard disks. Virtual hard disks are essentially hard disks for virtual machines. When Hyper-V first made its debut in Windows Server 2008, there was just one format of virtual hard disk available, called a VHD. Virtual hard disks that use the VHD format can be as large as 2 terabytes in size. With Windows Server 2012 and Windows Server 2012 R2, Microsoft introduced a new format of virtual hard disk called a VHDX. VHDX virtual hard disks can be as large as 64 terabytes and, according to Microsoft, are less likely to become corrupted from power failures. Since VHDX virtual hard disks are new to Windows Server 2012 and Windows Server 2012 R2 Hyper-V, they can't be used on Windows Server 2008 or Windows Server 2008 R2 Hyper-V servers. On Windows Server 2012 and Windows Server 2012 R2 Hyper-V servers, Generation 1 virtual machines support both VHD and VHDX virtual hard disks as both an operating system and a data drive. Generation 2 virtual machines, on the other hand, support only the newer VHDX virtual hard disks. You can't attach a VHD virtual hard disk to a Generation 2 virtual machine. The next change relates to operating system support. Generation 1 virtual machines offer backward compatibility with a range of Microsoft operating systems. Microsoft officially supports the use of Windows operating systems as far back as Windows XP and Windows Server 2003 on Generation 1 virtual machines. 
Furthermore, Generation 1 virtual machines support the installation of both 32-bit and 64-bit operating systems. Generation 2 virtual machines, on the other hand, only offer limited operating system support. In fact, at the time this video was recorded, Generation 2 virtual machines support only the following Microsoft operating systems. Windows Server 2012 R2, Windows Server 2012, and 64-bit versions of Windows 8.1 and Windows 8. You can't install any earlier Microsoft operating systems onto a Generation 2 virtual machine. Support for 32-bit operating systems has also been dropped entirely. This may seem like a drastic decision, but since 64-bit offers benefits beyond that of 32-bit, and since almost all operating systems today are available in 64-bit, the days of 32-bit operating systems are in fact numbered. It therefore makes sense to assume that, eventually, 32-bit virtual machines will no longer be necessary. The next change concerns physical DVD drive support. In Generation 1 virtual machines, it was possible to attach a virtual DVD drive to the virtual machine and then mount this to a physical DVD drive on the Hyper-V server. In short, this allows you to insert a DVD disc into the Hyper-V server and then access the DVD from the virtual machine. This was particularly useful for installing an operating system onto a Generation 1 virtual machine. With Generation 2 virtual machines, this is no longer possible. With Generation 2 virtual machines, the ability to mount a virtual DVD drive to a physical DVD drive has been dropped completely. To install an operating system onto a Generation 2 virtual machine using a virtual DVD drive, you now have no choice but to use an ISO file. This was done because the majority of vendors today are now selling Microsoft operating systems as ISO file downloads rather than delivering them to you on a disk. Once you have the ISO file, you can then burn it to a DVD if required. Or, in the case of Generation 2 virtual machines, you can simply download the ISO file, mount it to the virtual DVD drive on your virtual machine and install the operating system. The next change is a small one, virtual floppy drives. On a Generation 1 virtual machine, Microsoft gave us an emulated diskette or floppy disk drive. To use this drive, you first had to create a virtual floppy disk, or VFD, and then attach this to the virtual floppy drive. Once attached, this would give the impression that a floppy disk had been inserted into the virtual machine. You can then save up to 1.4 megabytes of data to the virtual floppy disk. Although only in small amounts, virtual floppy drives allowed the administrator to easily transfer data between Generation 1 virtual machines. That is, you could simply detach the virtual floppy disk and reattach it to another virtual machine. Recognising that floppy disk drives are an extremely dated technology, Microsoft decided to drop support for virtual floppy drives in their Generation 2 virtual machines. I'm sure you'll agree that the majority of network administrators will not be saddened by the loss of this drive. The final change I will look at is Pixie Boot. Pixie, or pre-boot execution environment, is a technology that allows a computer to boot from the network card. Pixie is most commonly used in large enterprises when installing operating systems onto computers over a network. Both Generation 1 and Generation 2 virtual machines support the use of Pixie. The only thing that has changed is how the Pixie boot is done. To perform a Pixie boot on a Generation 1 virtual machine, you would have to attach a special type of network adapter called a legacy network adapter. You can't perform a Pixie boot on a Generation 1 virtual machine using a regular network adapter. On a Generation 2 virtual machine, Pixie boot is much simpler. This is because Microsoft has dropped support for legacy network adapters entirely and has now made it possible to perform a Pixie boot from a regular network adapter. This saves the administrator the trouble of having to attach a legacy network adapter to the virtual machine, install the operating system and then detach the legacy network adapter and replace it with a regular network adapter that can be used for networking. Well, that about covers all of the differences between Generation 1 and Generation 2 virtual machines in Windows Server 2012 R2 Hyper-V. I hope that you've enjoyed this video and found it informative. For more videos, please check out our YouTube channel. And remember to subscribe to be notified of new videos when they're released.
Thanks for watching.